some respects. You know, usually people will have these webinars where they will try to give you advice on what exactly you should be posting and, and stuff like that. And I'm going to try to give you some of that today. But I think today's webinar, the, the purpose of it is to try to get everyone to focus really on what they're doing on social media, what their, you know, what their kind of cause and effect is. And I think that's where a lot of insurance agents are struggling today. They're not really sure what they're doing. So what my goal is today is to just give you some tips, give you some thoughts, give you things to focus on so you can go in and kind of ask yourself, okay, Ken mentioned this, am I doing it correctly, am I executing, and what's going to be the outcome of it? So, you know, when we're, we're going to start off, we're going to talk about Facebook, and then we're going to talk about LinkedIn for a little bit, and I'm going to kind of just go over some of the basics on what you should be doing strategically to drive more people to your website, because make no mistake, that's the whole point of social media. People are on social media, they're, they're chit-chatting, they're, they're gossiping, and at the end of the day, we want to utilize that to drive them to their site, maybe not today, but when they have that life event that makes them say, okay, I need to talk to an expert, I need to talk to a specialist who can help me, um, and you know, obviously that's, that's kind of where you guys come in. So. That being said, let's just talk about some Facebook basics right off the bat. 80% of all of the things, so let me actually, let me rewind. So on Facebook, you know, I'll, I'll pull up my page. You know, let's go over the basics. You obviously have a personal page, right, for yourself. Here's mine. And obviously you have a business page set up for your agency. I assume at this point everyone has set that up. Um, so that being said, there's kind of two things you can do. You can post on your, per well, I should expand. There's, there's quite a few things you can do. But from an insurance standpoint, you can post on your personal page. You can post on your business page. Um, and I think I have it listed here. You can comment on a friend's page. You can comment on another business. But what I want everyone to kind of think about today is, okay, what am I actually doing and what is the cause and effect? So everyone knows that in the upper right-hand corner here, there's a kind of a tab, and I'm trying to make like an, an arrow here, that controls what pages you're using. So you can see right now that I'm using Facebook as benefitstore.net, right? You can see that. If I toggle, and, and bear with me as I erase some of this stuff here, as I toggle back to Ken French by clicking on this, you can see that changes from benefitstore.net to Ken, okay? So when I click on the home button, I then go to Ken's news feed. And I know this is Ken's news feed because it says Ken up here, and we can see a picture of Ken here. And under, and we'll just kind of take this one post as an example, we can see Ken's picture right here. So if I was to comment on this Greg Schultz's post, it would comment as Ken French, okay? That's, now, I know that may sound you know, like, oh, that's obvious, Ken, but it, it, I think, honestly, 75% of the people on this webinar, they're not thinking about it like that. So when you go and pull up your agency site, and I'm going to pull up benefitstore.net, and I click on the home button, I actually have my own news feed for the business, okay? And you will notice that if I was to comment on good old Benefit Mall here, that Ken French's picture isn't there anymore. And now the Benefit Store picture is here. In the upper left is Benefit Store. In the upper right is Benefit Store. These are key triggers that you need to look for that when you're using Facebook. And guys, and the reason I'm harping on this is because most of the agents I'm working with, they are not really thinking about what page they're currently using. And when you don't understand what page, you know, when I say this, guys, I mean what page, when you're going to leave a comment, is it going to stamp? So I guess my point is, is the next level of strategy is to start going to a lot of businesses, right? So I can go up here and, and just type in, you know, New Jersey uh, accountants, right? And, you know, maybe that's my target market. And pull up you know, uh, Creative Tax Services Incorporated. Yeah, they're right down the street from me. If I click the like button, now BenefitStore.net, not Ken, but BenefitStore.net 
is now following this page. And if I was to leave a comment here, it would leave it as benefitstore.net. So again, why would I want to do that? I would do that because I guarantee you, if I leave a comment there, the guys who own that firm, they're going to go check out benefitstore.net's page. I guarantee you that. Because I would do the same thing if someone left a comment on my benefit store page and say, who are these guys? I'd take a look. Maybe they interest me. Maybe they don't. But my point is this. This is the next level of social media. It's creating, and I'll try to kind of spell it out for you guys. It's creating a business page for your insurance agency. It's having that page set up correctly, looking good, functional. And then it's going to potential clients' businesses, if that's your target, liking their page. And if you can and you feel the time is right, leave a well-educated comment. Or you can just like their post. But my point is, is if you do that, they will take notice to you. And a well-organized agency is going to have their page set up so it converts that traffic that they're generating, if that makes sense. So I, I don't want to go too crazy here, guys, because this is pretty intense strategy. But I think my point is, is I want you guys to start thinking about, hey, I'm on Facebook. What am I using Facebook as? Am I using it as the agency? Am I using it as myself? And I think a lot of people, they're very confused between the two pages. And they're very confused which page they're actually utilizing. And I think the best thing I can tell you is, is just keep an eye on this upper right-hand corner. It's going to tell you how you're using it. Now I'm back to using it as Ken. So that's, a, that's an important concept to understand when trying to get to the next level of utilizing social media to drive your target market to your business presence and then to your website. So you want to understand that when you're posting, you know, most of the people are seeing those posts on the feed, right? That was kind of what I was saying. 80% of all your posts are viewed on the feed. Our goal is very simple. Our goal is to get people to click like, comment, and share under our posts. This then increases the distribution for that post. I know it can be confusing, but you want to be cognizant of that. And obviously, you know, to get to that next level, you want to utilize both your personal page, your business page, and you want to start thinking about leaving comments and leaving comments on other businesses from your business. That's all. So hopefully that made sense. I know it's very confusing, um, but I do personally find that most people are very confused about how they have a personal page and a business page and how to click between both pages. Very important to understand that. Very important to understand how they both work. Because make no mistake, guys, and I, I hate to sound negative because I don't like to do that, but I think the reality is, is that Facebook is in year 12. There are agents out there, they're not beginners. They're super experts at using this stuff. And you're up against them, whether you like it or not. So in my opinion, you have to kind of educate yourself on how this stuff works to even understand what your competition is doing to get in front of the consumer. And, and again, the reason we want to do all this stuff is very simple. People pay attention to Facebook. People pay attention to LinkedIn. That's why it's valuable. As most of you guys know, I hate these things. I hate Facebook. I hate LinkedIn. But on the flip side, I'm on it all the time because it, I know that statistically it increases the chances I can be successful. When we're talking about LinkedIn, you know, and, and most people always ask me, Ken, you know, what's the point of LinkedIn? Why do I even use it? Well, there's, there's a few points to it. You know, one, you want to make sure that your profile is set up like a professional resume, right? I mean, we've, always, we've gone through this before in the past. You want to make sure that it's, it's beautiful, it's perfect, that maybe you have some PowerPoints or videos that explain how you can help people. You want to have your education, your background. You want to have it set up so it's perfect. That's the first thing with LinkedIn. The next question is, is well, how do I really utilize it? How do I get how do I get leads and referrals off of LinkedIn? Well, last week we talked about LinkedIn messaging, which you know allows us to be very proactive and and actually to you know utilize our connections. But there are other ways to post on LinkedIn. Um, obviously, you can post on LinkedIn's feed, which is very much like Facebook. You'll notice now that there are pictures and graphics. This guy even has an Excel spreadsheet on there. It's becoming more complicated. 
So what that means is, is you know, to just come on here and post and try to solicit is probably not going to work well anymore. You know, you have to have some strategy. So right off the bat, you want to be cognizant of posting times. Um, you know, let, let me kind of rewind and say, if you just impulsively, maybe right after this webinar, wow, I, I watched that webinar, I'm going to go post some things, that's probably a bad idea, okay? Social media, though it doesn't see, though it seems very chaotic, the people that are experts at it are very much in control and they're very much thinking about everything they're doing. So the time you post is important. The reason I say that is, is it's always about the always about the law of averages. And what I find right now is, is if you post at maybe about seven, eleven, one, four, and seven, those are the highest traffic times on these things. So you always kind of want to keep that in mind. Then it kind of comes down to, well, what do you actually post? I'll tell you right now that if you go on there and start soliciting products, make no mistake, you will be tuned out immediately. Probably most people will unlike you and potentially unfriend you to some extent if you do it consistently. So my best tip I can give you is, is never solicit on social media. You know, and, and people say, well, why is that? You know, why can't I get results from soliciting? The, the best story I can tell you is, is my grandmother's 95 years old. Okay? She comes from another era. And in her mind, over her whole life, she always kind of considered herself upper echelon, whether that was true or not, that's debatable. But she always kind of considered, she went to college, whatever. My point is this. She always tried to follow the prim and proper way. Today, if someone calls her up, she's still cognizant, still got a working mind. If someone calls her up who's a solicitor, boom, she hangs up the phone. And she says, that was a solicitor. I had to hang up on him. She hangs up on them because in her mind, it's socially acceptable to hang up on a solicitor. So my point is this. That's kind of how our society has deemed solicitors. We hang up on them. It's socially acceptable to not listen to them. So when you start to go on to social media and project yourself to be a solicitor, you immediately take 80% of the people and they tune you out. So you want to kind of forget about that type of posting and lean towards more promotion. Let people know who you are where you're located, how you help them. You know, stay away from the specifics of the products. You know, you want to, of course, try to project yourself to be the specialist, to be the expert. Let people know, you know, that you're on top of things occurring in the industry, especially if, if things are happening locally that are insurance-based. You know, maybe there's a disaster, maybe there's an ice storm, who knows? You know, let people know you're on top of this stuff and that you can guide them to the right solution. Um, and of course, Try not to be so generic. That's a, a, a pattern I see a lot of agencies. They, they'll post a generic article. Try to you know, have your opinion in there. Try to customize it a little bit. And most importantly, try to use your inner sales skills. Well, what does that mean? What that means is, is try to, I know on social media people don't really talk back to you too much, at least not initially. You don't get that initial talk back. But you have to kind of use your social skills to figure out what's on people's minds and try to talk about that and shape it so they're paying attention to you, if that makes sense. And it's not easy, but I guess my point is, is if you're an agency that's local, you know, try to talk about things that are local. You know, if, talk about the local sports team, the local high school. Try to interject your expertise of insurance into it without soliciting them. So my point is, is if you just go on there and start impulsively posting things, it's probably going to equal failure. You know, social media is now in year 12. You know, you have to think of yourself as a more polished player, right? Those are the guys that are doing things, thinking about things, and executing things. So I know today's webinar was very quick in 15 minutes, but I guess my point was is I wanted everyone to start thinking about what they're doing when they're on here. You know, when you're on Facebook, think about what page you're using. Think about when you post a comment, how it's going to be perceived. Where is it going to go, right? When you're commenting on people's posts, boom, it's going on to these other people's news feeds. That could be good. That could be bad, right? You know, so, you know, here's an example. Let, let's say you were friends with Matt. He's posting right off the bat, hey, I'm a new friggin' homeowner, right? This guy's probably a target for multiple insurance products. You don't want to go on here and post a comment that says, Matt, I can save you 50% on homeowners if you combine it with auto. You don't want to do that, but you want to find a way to get in front of this guy 
leave a comment that potentially gets you a phone call, not only from this guy, Matt, but hey, from all the other people that have commented that are going to get your comment as well. So my point is, is you have to start thinking about those things. And if you do, and if you pay attention and you put in a few minutes each day, you can take advantage of all these people on social media talking, if that makes sense. Guys, I appreciate your time. I look forward to next week. Hopefully today I gave you some things to think about, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks again. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.